Okay. Um, this story takes place in Berlin, Germany, in 1988. The date is important because I believe it was the following year or later that same year, the Berlin Wall came down. I was on tour in West Berlin. I was staying at the loft of a photographer friend of mine. I had some other friends who I was playing with. So I knew people there and I was there for a couple weeks and on my day off I decided I wanted to go to East Berlin. Now, East Berlin was separated from West Berlin by the Berlin Wall. And in order to cross into East Berlin, you had to go to certain checkpoints. I wanted to go to a historic checkpoint because this was a little historic adventure for me. So I wanted to go to Checkpoint Charlie was the name of it on Wilhelmstrasse. And uh, I wanted to go to Checkpoint Charlie because it was famous from the war and everything like that. So I get to the checkpoint and I had a whole list of things that I was supposed to get for my friends in East Berlin. Uh, like a shopping list because everything was cheaper in East Berlin and I also wanted to buy some things in East Berlin. So I had this list of things to do. So I went to the checkpoint and there was a soldier there and he had traveled with his family eight hours across uh, Germany to get to the checkpoint so that he could enter East Berlin and they told him, no, you cannot come in. Your paperwork is not in order. And he was like, I drove eight hours, no. Your paperwork is not in order, you may not enter. They, he had to leave. My paperwork was in order. I was allowed to enter. When you enter the checkpoint, uh, they ask you where you're going. And I didn't really know where I was going, so I just said, oh, well, I, I'm going to some stores and I'm going to go for some walks and look at some buildings. It was vague. I didn't know that you had to t say where you were going. So, uh, when I went through the checkpoint, I was on my own, I was by myself, and I had the address of a music store, which was going to be my first stop because I wanted to buy some music scores. So I get to this music store, and I start asking, oh, where is uh, Mahler, where is uh, Stravinsky, and nobody spoke English, and nobody spoke, uh, they spoke um, Russian, German and Russian. So I was, I didn't really have any very much skill in either one of those languages. So I was struggling to explain what I wanted to the clerk. And a young man in his 20s, and I was, you know, maybe 29 at the time, a young man was there and he spoke English and he came over to me. He said, can I help you explain what you want. And so I told him what I wanted and then he helped me find what I wanted. And it turned out we got in a conversation. He was a flute player. Oh, and wow. very nice young man and cute. <laughs> so we were talking to each other and I bought some scores and then I said, oh, you know, I have some other things to buy and I don't really know where to go. Can you help me? He said, sure. So I showed him some things and he took me to a couple different stores, a photography store and a department store to get these things. And then I was done. I got everything on my list. And he, and he said, well, I'm going to uh, see a couple friends. Would you like to go with me? I just met this guy. Didn't know him from Adam. Sure. And I start wandering around, getting on trains and subways and things wandering around Berlin with this guy that I just met. So he brings me, or we go, to a friend of, some friends of his in East Berlin who were activists. And they did many things that were illegal and they were involved in, um, you know, disseminating propaganda and, you know, May Day and rallies and political statements and all things like this. And they would have their meetings 
it was the kind of thing like, okay, we'll meet behind the drugstore at four o'clock on Tuesday. That's how, you know, there were no, people didn't call each other on the phone or anything like that. So I get to um, this location and all of these young people are sitting around the basement of someone's house, like something in Greenwich Village or something, planning their next um, anti-government rally. So it was all highly illegal. And uh, we, we do this, and it was very interesting, and some of it was in English, and I was trying to follow what they were talking about. It was really, really cool. I was like, wow, I'm in the middle of this propaganda you know, meeting in East Berlin. That's awesome. You know? <laughs> so then we, we leave that meeting, and my new friend says to me, oh, by the way, uh, we're, we're being followed by the the civilian secret police. So, and I said, what? We're being followed? He said, yeah, because uh, when, when I went through the checkpoint, he says to me, I um, hesitated on where I said I was going, and so I saw that someone was following. He said, wait, I'm going to get rid of him. So we were in a subway station. So he <clears throat> went up to the man that was following us. I had no clue. And he asked him what time it was. Well, once you make contact with the person who's following you, they can't follow you anymore. So we got rid of him. So we kept going. He said, well, I have another friend to visit. You want? Do you want to come with me? Sure, right? So now we go way across on the other side of town to this other place. Now, this friend of his was very rich, a dentist. And his apartment was beautiful, and he had two grand pianos in the living room. And, and his wife came and served us tea and cookies, and uh, they had some instruments. They had an old saxophone, and they brought that out, and a flute, and a piano. And we're, so we start a jam session, and we're hanging out with these people. So this was the complete opposite from what I had ex just experienced with this guy. So. We, had a one, we were having a wonderful time, but then my new friend said, oh, look at the time. We have to be back at the checkpoint before midnight, because if you don't get back before midnight, you will be detained. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really want to be detained mm -hmm. in East Berlin, so I said, well, let's go. So he said, well, where is your checkpoint? You have to exit at the same checkpoint that you came in. And, I said, and he said, my checkpoint's on, on Wilhelmstrasse. So I knew that my checkpoint was on Wilhelmstrasse. So I said, oh, mine is the same as yours. I can go with you. Mm -hmm. So we get back on the subway. We get to the checkpoint. And it's about, you know, seven minutes to midnight. And, you know, I'm like, oh, we're cool. And my friend shows his papers, goes through. I show my papers. Ah. What? You're at the wrong checkpoint. No, Wilhelmstrasse. I came when Wilhelm... No, no. Wilhelmstrasse was a long street, like Broadway. There were many checkpoints. <laughs> I was at the wrong one. Five minutes. Right. So it's five minutes to midnight. I said, well, what should I do? He said, well, your checkpoint is that way. You, you know, you could try to make it. But I knew, you know, I said, well, how far is it? Oh, you know, it's like, I don't know, four miles. <laughs> yeah. Five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so I knew I wasn't going to make it. I go out into the street, and they said, it's that way. So I knew which direction I had to go. But it was hopeless. I would never make it in time. The streets were completely deserted. There was not anyone on the road. What did I do? I started running toward the checkpoint, even though I knew I wasn't going to make it. And this is like, but this is the human condition, right? Like we do things that we know are hopeless, but we do them anyway, because there's nothing else to do. So I start running towards the checkpoint, even though I knew I wouldn't make it. And I'm running down the street, and a limousine drives up next to me, and a voice says, Hello, do you need a ride to the checkpoint? 
and it was an English diplomat who, you know, he sees someone running, obviously, what are they, what's going on, right? Now, if I hadn't been running, if I had just been walking down the street, he wouldn't have stopped. Oh, someone's taking a walk there. It's kind of late, but... The power of running. Oh, my God. But someone running at midnight, you know where they're going, right? So he picked me up <laughs> at midnight. I walk through the checkpoint. <laughs> Get back to West Berlin safe and sound. Wow. So that's, uh, that's that story.